You are listening to Smart Women's Dating Podcast, episode number 91. Welcome to Smart Women's Dating Podcast. I am your host, certified life coach Lærke Nielsen, and I help smart, independent women attract the love they deeply desire without having to chase or settle. This podcast will give you the mindset tools and insights you need to finally crack the code to your love life. Are you ready? Then let's go. Hey there. Today I'm going to continue the talk about emotional unavailability. And this time we're going to look at why it is you keep falling for Mr. Unavailable, if that is something you notice. So without further ado, I'm going to give you here the episode that was first published almost a year and a half ago, and where I take a look at the reasons we keep falling for someone unavailable and how to break that pattern. And as always, if you want support in this area, I am here. So just book a free consultation call and then we can talk about your situation and your experience and what you need support on. And I will share with you how I can help you. The link to book the call is in the show notes. Enjoy the episode. Hey there, friends. How are you all doing? I just want to say, honestly, I'm so grateful for every single one of you who listens. And I feel like this podcast is my little baby that is growing week for week. So thank you all for listening. We are in the middle of a mini-series here for the podcast. And last week, I talked about what it looks like when a man is emotionally available versus unavailable. And today we're going to take a look at why you even fall for someone who is emotionally unavailable to begin with. You know, the guy who is really hot and attractive or deeply interesting and unique and with whom you have a great connection with your together, except it doesn't happen as often as you want. We're going to take a look at the reasons you get hooked on him and I'm going to give you some steps to take to break that pattern because for many, Unfortunately, this ends up in frustrations and heartbreak. This is also related to the chasing energy that I talked about in episode 2, but in this episode here, we are going to dive a little bit more into the reasons we get hooked in the first place. And then the next week, the third episode of this mini-series, we will be talking about what it means to be emotionally available to yourself what that even is and what it looks like and why it's going to change your life when you practice this. So let's get into the topic of today. Why you even fall for someone who is not offering you what you desire from a serious relationship. We're talking about an emotionally unavailable man who isn't ready or open for the commitment and the emotional connection that you want. He is not prioritizing you in his life. He isn't taking initiative and inviting you. He might be responding to your messages, but he isn't initiating a lot. He's not making time for you, and he's always very busy or has another excuse as to why he can't see you. On the other hand, he's also not ending the relationship, and it's not like you never see him. You see him just enough to remind you of how great it feels to be with him. So deep down, you know that you're not getting what you want from this relationship, but you're still hooked on him. And there can be several reasons as to why you feel drawn to this kind of connection and don't just walk away when you realize that it's not that great after all. So I will walk you through six reasons and then for each of them, give you some tips on how you can start changing the pattern. So the first reason is if we have scarcity thinking around men. For instance, we think that there are not that many good men out there, and so this guy's attention is worth a lot, and even more because he's less available. It's like you have a high demand and a low supply, and you might have been dating for a while and feeling quite hopeless, and then you finally meet someone interesting, and now your brain is going to tell you that he is your last chance. It's either him or being single forever, more or less. It is the scarcity thinking. He is very rare and I'm very lucky to have met him. He is the last good man on earth. Which is of course nowhere near the truth. 
You are not lucky to have his attention. You have his attention because you're an amazing woman. And he isn't that special. In fact, emotionally unavailable men are everywhere. There is in fact a very high supply of them. So how do you break this pattern? The way to work with this is to become aware of your limiting beliefs about men and how many good men that there are around you. Challenge your thinking to see that there are still many interesting single men that you just haven't met yet. The guy is not the last man on earth and him being unavailable and busy with work, not able to see you this weekend either, that does not make his attention more valuable. Be aware that it's his choice to not make time for you. He might be busy, but even then, if he wanted to see you or just hear your voice, he would find a way to make it happen. And the fact that he doesn't, it makes him less valuable to you. Because a man who doesn't show up for your connection, he brings less value to your relationship. It's as simple as that. So the way to get out of the scarcity thinking is to start believing that there are plenty of options for you out there. Men who are willing to make time for you and open to connecting on a deeper level. Because as long as you are busy with Mr. Unavailable, you won't see the real options. So I would recommend you to listen to episode 9 on Man Mindset if you want some inspiration on how to start doing this, how to start changing your thinking. The second reason is in the nature of the hot and cold behavior. If this is the kind of unavailable man that you have fallen for. The hot and cold behavior, what do I mean by that? It's someone who is there one day and then the next he isn't. And every time he is there, it's very intense. So your brain gets a dopamine hit and when it's gone, you experience the cravings of that. If you don't know dopamine, it's the pleasure hormone and basically it's the hormone behind all kinds of addictions. It's also what you feel when you achieve success such as winning the lottery or passing a big exam or getting a promotion at work. And what happens when your brain is exposed to dopamine is you want more. It would be easier if he was just a jerk all the way through, but he isn't. It doesn't seem completely impossible to win him over. There's a slight opening and it's this little opening that keeps the addiction going because that is what's happening chemically in your brain. It's a love addiction. It's the excitement of trying hard to get his attention and then the joy of getting it for a moment that keeps you hooked for the long stretch when there is empty and it's just a desert. You don't need to have any self-worth issues or childhood traumas to get caught in this. Just imagine a delicious dessert. I'm going to talk about chocolate again. Imagine something with chocolate and your favorite fruit. Soft, creamy and savory. And you get one mouthful and then it's taken away from you. And your instant reaction is, of course, to want more, to want it back. It's the same with this guy, except it's just better than dessert. So no wonder you have cravings. How do you break this pattern? Stop letting chemistry guide you. Sparks and instant attraction, that's what we think we're supposed to feel, and that is just BS. In many cases, the instant high is more a red flag than a healthy guide. But we're all being told through movies and stories that love at first sight is the ideal situation and a sign of true love, that destiny meant for this to happen, that we're supposed to be together, because why else would we feel it so strongly and so early? Dopamine is the answer. So I'm not saying it's bad to feel attraction early on. I'm only offering to you not to let that guide you, not to let that mean that you are automatically right for each other. Because can you, for instance, remember any time in the past when you were attracted to someone that turned out to not be good for you? Attraction and chemistry is just not our best guide, even if it feels amazing. Your best guide is actually consistency and reliability. Does this guy do what he says he will do? Does he make time for you? Is he showing up on a longer term? Do you continue liking him after three months? for instance. All are things that might sound really boring in comparison to sparks and chemistry, but those are signs of a healthy and loving relationship. And you can also check the signs that you are dating an emotionally available man in episode 14. So enjoy the chemistry when you feel it, but don't use it as your chief love advisor. It is just chemistry. 
The third reason is that you don't believe you deserve love that flows easily towards you. You believe that love has to be earned. This is also the belief I talk about in episode 2. The fact that you feel naturally attracted to someone who doesn't give you the love and attention you desire is a reflection of you believing that this is what's possible for you, that you don't deserve more. The way to break that pattern is to uplevel your self-worth and learn how to cultivate self-love. Uplevel your standards, get clear on what you want in a relationship and not allow anything less than that. That kind of work can be difficult to do on your own. This would be where it's typically good to get support from a coach. And the fourth reason is that you have never experienced a good example up front. You might have grown up with role models who showed you how not to do. And then in most relationships, it's been the same pattern of not getting the attention and the commitment you want. So you don't react to the red flags simply because they seem more orange to you and not really red. Your high tolerance for a low commitment and your ability to take care of your own needs are actually getting in your way here. And how do you break that pattern? Here you also want to get clear on what you want from a relationship. Open up your mind to noticing examples of relationships that seem healthy to you. Look around you and find those so that your brain gets used to thinking that something else is possible for you. The fifth reason is that you might yourself have a fear of emotional intimacy. If you have experienced heartbreak in the past, a normal way to react is to protect yourself from having someone get too close to you. Even if you think you want that, you think you want emotional intimacy. You unconsciously seek out relationships where this is not possible because it feels more safe. And how do you break that pattern? You will have to address that fear itself and look at the thoughts that come up when you think of emotional intimacy. If you are afraid that when he gets to know you for real and close up, he's going to lose interest, you want to challenge your reasons for thinking that. And you can also use visualization to expose your brain to the experience of having someone close to you. Check out my episode 13 for that. So the sixth reason that you could fall for someone who is emotionally unavailable is you are emotionally unavailable to yourself. Now, what the heck does that mean? Let me explain. It means that you are not open to feeling all your feelings. You are not deeply listening to yourself and taking your own needs and feelings seriously. Like if you ignore the fact that you feel miserable in between dates with this guy. And you push away this feeling instead of allowing yourself to feel and take it as a sign that something is not working for you. And as a strong independent woman, you're probably used to push through negative emotions. And this can be useful in some situations on a short term basis, but in most cases it does have a price. You get disconnected from yourself. You ignore a part of yourself. And this also means that you teach your subconscious that your feelings don't matter. Now, how to break that pattern? Practice becoming really good at first identifying your feelings. Just notice what you feel without any judgment. Your feelings are just the body's reaction to a thought in your mind. And we are as humans built to feel feelings. We're meant to feel it all. There's nothing wrong in our feelings. They are all valid. So practice inviting them in and get to know all of them. And then get curious about what they're here to tell you. This is also where you start trusting your gut feelings. This is a topic I'm going to dive more into in next episodes, so watch out for that. It's one of my favorite topics because this has changed my own life and the way I think of myself and treat myself in such an immense way. So you can look forward to that. And as a side note to all of this, I also want to add that if you practice feminine energy and leaning back, even if you do meet someone emotionally unavailable, the relationship will typically not develop further because you let him be the one in charge and take the initiative and once he stops doing that, you know he was never serious. So this will prevent you from going too far with someone who is emotionally unavailable. And finally, I want to offer you one general advice that can make you more resilient and immune to emotional unavailability and that is to create the life of your dreams. Make sure your life is so much fun and interesting that your next partner is just the cherry on the top, that you are the party that he wants to join. 
and it's easy for you to say no to anyone who isn't aligned with what you want for yourself. So this is what I had for you today, and I'll be back next week with another episode in this series of emotional availability. And in the meantime, have an amazing week. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast and you want to get support from a coach on your love journey, I invite you to book a free console call with me. You will find the link in the show notes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and I would love it if you would rate and review this podcast and then you also help other women find it. 